All right, I'm going to show you the proof now that Ed Fenninger actually admits that he's lost. He has no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, he did this thing here, Ruckman's confusion over the image of God and man, not the Trinity. Um, over here, he's saying about Peter Ruckman was a Trinitarian, not a heretic. I showed the video proof that Ruckman taught exactly what I teach, that uh, you know God has a soul, God the Father has a body, Jesus Christ has a spirit, the Holy Spirit. And uh, and then he comes, well, you know, yeah, Ruckman's just confused. You see, everybody's confused except for Ed Fenninger. If you're familiar with this guy and his channel, he comes out against Robert Breaker. He comes out against Stephen Anderson. He comes out against me obsessively. He comes out against Peter Ruckman. He comes out. Everybody's confused except for Ed Fenninger. Ed Fenninger is the one true shining light that the body of Christ has, that he knows the gospel which other people don't know. He knows about the Trinity. You know, there's all this different stuff. See? He's lost. And uh, down here in the comment, this is my comment to him here. You are lost, Fenninger. You're the most confused man I have ever tried to listen to. You teach a false gospel. You defend unscriptural heresies, the Trinity being the worst. And you believe that you alone are the only one who is right. Exactly right. And he doesn't answer that. I'll show you the other video here in just a minute. And uh, you produce nothing original. And he flips out over this. Because you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You have head knowledge. He will not read this part of the my comment. And that is it. God's wrath is upon you. And it is. You remind me of Martin Richling. And I believe you are headed for the same destruction he is suffering. What I meant by that is that Martin Richling, he came out with almost identical heresies as... Ed Fenninger, way back in uh, 2000, what was it, 2014, I guess, when we moved here, something like that, I think 2013, 2014, yeah, two, winter of 2014, and right in the time I was moving, Martin Richling was coming out attacking me, and, um, you know, just saying all kinds of vile things, that prayer is a work, you know, um, Jesus is not God, I mean, all this different stuff, uh, and, Fenninger actually defended Martin Richling. Said, you know, the gospel's not Romans chapter 10, it's Romans chapter 3, um, which is ironic. Let me just show you that real quick. Uh, it's funny because there's a, you know, it's just this spirit or something. See, Romans chapter 3 versus Romans chapter 10 for salvation. Exactly what Martin Richling was doing, you know. And, of course, uh, you know, he does the same thing. Romans, Romans 3, not Romans 10. You go to hell if you, you know, listen to Romans chapter 10 and follow it literally. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he came out and was one of the ones that defended Martin Richling. Martin Richling is a Jesuit, according to Eric John Phelps. Eric John Phelps worked with Martin Richling for a little bit of time. And he told me, he said, yeah, he's a Jesuit. He said, you know, and I showed the proof that Martin Richling in his personal, you know, bio thing, he talked about, you know, that he wants to be a Jesuit someday. He was a crooked cop. He was, you know, all kinds of other stuff. Let me just show you that real quick. Um, just in case you're interested. And uh, Martin Richling, also another friend of his, contacted me right here's the video talking about it contacted me and he said that uh, um, Martin Richling was a habitual fornicator knew him personally Martin Richling was a crooked police officer uh, that got uh, went to prison for extortion and um, just a wicked wicked devil but there Martin Richling crooked cop Jesuit wolf and minister of Satan and he qualified for all of those believe me He's just evil, evil man, just so filled with hate. It's incredible. Martin Richling's other Christ, Martin Richling's papal infallibility. Martin Richling did not believe that he was wrong in anything. He was infallible. He literally believed that. You can watch the video. Uh, Works-based salvation there. When it gets right down to it, that's what these guys really believe. You have to believe what they teach or you're not really saved. You know, it's weird. But... You know, I was coming out with all that stuff attacking Martin Richling. And uh, Fenninger here was one of the ones that defended him. 
you know, and the uh, Richling fell, and I found it out here, uh, down here, where is it? Yeah, right here. Uh, there you go again, Brian, taking pleasure in other people's suffering. Martin has cancer from what I heard, and I'm sure Brian thinks it's because he came against him. No, it's because he came against the Word of God, you know, and uh, that's what's going to happen to him. I said it right there. I believe you are headed for the same destruction he is suffering. So the Lord, Lord's going to get Feniger. He's had chance after chance after chance to repent. And, you know, the whole thing is, the reason I went after him here for a few days is because I've learned, you know, back when I was a boy, you know, in the playground, when you have a bully and they just keep picking on you and they won't let you alone and they just keep on coming after you and coming after you and coming, you can't just keep saying, hey, whatever, and just walking away from their insults and everything else. You have to turn around and confront that bully and just say, okay, put up or shut up here, essentially. All right. <clears throat> But I'm going to actually play this one here. And uh, here's my comment to him. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. And this is exactly what you're going to hear in this video. He's condemned of himself. You're as good as being in hell. May God have mercy on your wicked soul. All right. Let's listen to this real quick. Good afternoon. And uh, this video, I'm briefly sure what the real issue of Brian is. And he left a comment on my one of my videos again. I'm gonna read this. Uh, you are lost, Fenninger. You're the most confused man I've ever tried to listen to. He can't figure it out. He's so confused he can't figure out someone who, who makes sense. That's why he's he's got his old vocabulary now, he can't figure anything out. Uh you teach a false gospel, you defend unscriptural heresies, the Trinity being the worst. He's making the Trinity the worst heresy to, to believe in. It's, it is. it's fascinating. And you, uh, you believe that you alone are the only one who is right. Well, we all defend ourselves and the idea we think we're right until proven otherwise. And you have been proven otherwise. Many people have proved you wrong. But the pride just doesn't let you understand that. Oops, get back here. You know, so the scriptures have to prove that you're wrong. Um, you produce nothing original. That's the issue, because you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about. This whole... Okay, he will never say this from here down. Never going to say it. The rest of the video, watch. Thing about him trying to break away and make a whole thing. Look what I found. I found that the Godhead is three parts or one person and Ruckman got it wrong because he was still using Trinity and still using persons and he was still influenced by the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, Yeah, well you see, uh, I thought you just said there that the Bible is the standard. That's why I judged Ruckman because Ruckman was using terms that do not appear in the Bible and the scriptures. But we're thinking it out here. I mean, it, it doesn't even look good. I mean, that guy's just pale and... Writing, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is Brian Danglinger, Danglinger trying to prove he has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't need to prove it. Right? Uh, my ministry speaks for itself. The Lord has shown me many, many things. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Which... Ed Fenninger here has never experienced. He's not born again. It's all up here, just like I wrote in my comment, which he wouldn't say. He's trying to find something original. I try, never try to be original. <laughs> I never try to be original. That's not what he says here. I try to be right. See, and how, that's, and how does he be right? Watch this. This is going from. He has to prove. See, he's looking at all the great people out there theologians who produce things and he wants to be one of them he wants to be see i got this i got the tree i got this godhead thing see god showed me this godhead thing the godhead is is one person three parts and and oh man and jesus christ is the father this is original this is this is me this is you know i'm going by the king james bible and i god show me this 
see, see how he's making fun of the personal relationship where God shows you things? I have gotten amazing revelations of things I've never heard from anybody else from people who are newly saved. People that experience the new birth and they say, hey brother, uh, I was reading through the Bible today and, and it, it kind of like the Lord showed me this thing here and I look at it and I say, man, that's incredible. Uh, wow, yeah. And you know, spirit testifies with my spirit and I say, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's what happens when you're born again. All right. I'm going to be going over some scriptures here when Nutty Boy here is done, when I'm done with this video. I'm sorry to make you endure this, I know, but let's just watch a little more. <laughs> this this is all part of his whole thing about a changed life. God showed him something new. He's reaching out. Yeah, that's what the Bible teaches. See, he's proving all that I'm saying here. All he has is a head knowledge. He's read a lot of books. More on that later. He's actually showing a change life in the sense that this is his spiritual gift. He has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and God is showing him this. Despite no scripture about God the Father being the soul, nothing in Jesus, nothing, nothing there about the image of God being uh, three parts, nothing in there. Uh, in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I've proved it over and over and over again. Nothing in it, but he, now this is his big fight see, which against the Catholic Trinity. The Catholic Trinity and all those other men have been deceived, but Brian Denninger has got the proof to see that the, the, his eyes have been opened, and he sees it, and uh, this is something original now. He's he's going, with it. he's going to fight for it. That's what this is all about. See, it's funny. Notice how a liar and a deceiver will twist things. Notice what I said here. I said, you believe that you alone are the only one who is right. You. Notice the word you produce nothing original. But he takes it and he twists it and puts it back on me. I said you produce nothing original. Dead Fenninger. And he all he can do is just twist it and throw it back at me. He can't answer my accusation. What has he done that's original? What has he done that God has showed him? Where's the spirit of revelation that's supposed to be there in the life of a Christian? He doesn't have it. All he has is his little books and little things that he's read. And I can look at this volume here and that, that volume there and everything else. God doesn't show him a thing. And he's admitting to it. See, he thinks he's original. He thinks he's showing something. He thinks that uh, this is something that he's, he's he, you know, he's, you know, he, he, this is showing his, his spiritual gift that he's really a, a minister. Uh, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be, you know. A minister of Jesus Christ is going to have a personal relationship and the Lord's going to reveal things to them. I'll show you the scriptures here in just a minute. Well, about two minutes. Showing is he's a nut. It's a heresy. The issue has never been original. God has put out what he's put out in the word of God. Now, men come along, they'll find things that haven't been found before. But a lot of things in scripture haven't been found before, but they're not going to contradict something else. They'll never contradict a clear scripture that's already been established. So you're building on other people's uh, dis uh, discoveries or, or you know, uh, what they've they've opened the, the scripture. The Holy Spirit's opened their eyes to. Oh, but man, having having a hard time getting it out there, huh? I mean, the, the devils and your own brain are really kind of fighting it out there, probably. And then laid out. But that's his big thing. That's why he wants to be original. This is all about Brian. Uh, no, actually, I said you can't come up with anything original. I didn't say anything about me. I come up with lots of original things. I didn't say anything about me in there. I said you. <laughs> See? See the spirit of a liar. How he twists it. Being something. Being someone. That God, so he can show everybody that God has raised him up. And he has a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this shows that because he is attacking the Trinity. You know, and, and you know, all these other guys didn't do it. Okay. Um, again, is the Trinity in the scriptures? No. Then I'll attack it. Where did the Trinity come from? Roman Catholicism. It's a cult in its origin. I had a brother just sent me a thing about it's the occult origins of the Trinity. 
to continue. They've been deceived, not blind. He got it right. Three parts. Okay, we'll see. He's didn't prove anything yet. He didn't prove one thing. <laughs> I've proved all kinds of stuff. You know? Showing things from the catechism. Showing things and going over the scriptures. But, but see how he's mocking the personal relationship, see? See how he mocks it? He's lost. All he's showing is that he doesn't know what he's talking about. But that's the issue. The other issue. We left that there. That little thing came in there. You're not original. That's what this is all about. Which he says, you're not original, and that shows you have no relation, personal relation with Jesus Christ. That's the problem with too many pastors. They want to be original. The issue is never being original. The issue is getting what the scriptures say right. That's the important thing. Not the idea that you found something no one else has found. But that what's in there. Was okay. First of all, again, I didn't say you have to find something that nobody else has found. I'm saying you do your own work. That's called being original. And he can't do his own work. All he's doing is reading from books and putting things together from his books. I'm not talking about new revelations or things like that. I mean, that's there. Some of that should be there as a Christian. But I'm saying just be original. Don't just read from your books and make your own, you know, just plagiarizing everything and putting it all together and whatever else. He has no concept of the new birth. None. Which God does show you, you get it correct. Amen. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me show you the scriptures now. All right. Um, start out here in chapter, or yeah, chapter Ephesians, chapter 1 and verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, talked about that verse the other day, with the Gene Kim thing, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. When you're saved, when you get truly born again, the Lord is going to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. He's going to reveal things to you. All right, that's called the new birth. Romans chapter... 15. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they, ha they that have not heard shall understand. What happens when you get into ministry is, God's going to send you in, into some place that the gospel's not already been named, or he's going to give you truths then say hey don't you know just be peter ruckman copycat or whatever else i'm going to give you some things here that you need to bring out to these people god will speak through a minister of jesus christ in other words he'll reveal things to you in his word and say okay you know if somebody wants to learn about the bible version issue then they're going to go over here to that guy or they, they want to learn about this or they want to learn about that but i want you to speak these things and preach these things that's the whole point of the body of Christ. It's not that new mysterious things have been come up and there's new gospels now. And there's no, 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 no. It's the same old book, but God will reveal things through a minister. So he's not building upon another man's foundation, right? Faking or none get that. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Very important scripture here. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death you say could you give me some scripture for a personal relationship with Jesus Christ right there um, give you an example uh, I never told anybody about this but I personally know um, Brad Pitt let's use that name um, really don't care anything about the guy as far as you know old Hollywood actor but just Bear with me here for a minute. I personally know Brad Pitt. You say, really? You speak to him? No. Um, does he speak to you? No. Uh, how do you know him? I read a lot of books about him. I mean, I think I've read every book in print about Brad Pitt. So I know him. Uh, no, you don't know him if he doesn't speak to you. You understand? 
I know Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ speaks to me. He shows me things in his word and he gives me orders as a preacher, as a minister. He tells me what to say. And there are times I've made mistakes and, you know, listening to other people and whatever else. And I bring out something and I have to come back and I have to say, I was wrong about that. I'm sorry. You know, and the whole, when I used to say Trinity, that was a mistake because it's not in scripture. And when you actually study what the whole Trinity thing is, it's a false pagan idol. You know, again, look it up. Just look it up. Holy Trinity. And you'll see pagan idols these pagan idols all through catholic cathedrals and all the other stuff you can even buy them and have a little statue there on your desk or whatever else it's a pagan idol two men and a bird give me some scripture on that one you know and i talked about that in my other thing here that i just talked about the the um thing of is the third person of the trinity a bird you can watch that thing but look at this Colossians chapter 1 verse 5 for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth, doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth as ye also learned of Epaphras our dear fellow servant who is for you a faithful minister of Christ whoops forgot I didn't click on that thing um uh, verse 8 who also declared unto us your love in the spirit for this calls us for this calls we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding well i've read a lot of books yeah well i read one book here i've read books too by the way but i read one and this one here contradicts a lot of the stuff I read back there, including a lot of what Peter Ruckman preached. And you get a this thing from the Lord, he'll show you the error of men that you respect. And all of a sudden you realize, wait a second, they're saying this and the Bible says something different. What am I going to do? See, God will test you. God will say, are you going to follow me or are you going to follow that man that you learned from? It's fine to highly esteem a man in love and everything else uh, for his work's sake. Sure, that's absolutely fine. But if all you ever do is just read books to make to help you interpret the Word of God, and God doesn't show you anything, He doesn't reveal anything to you, uh, you've not experienced a new birth. But let's continue here. Verse 11. Strengthened with all might according to His glorious power unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. See, this is all stuff about the new birth. Your life changes when you get saved. Fenninger's never experienced that. All right. Uh, where are we going to go next? Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 and verse 22. I think this is interesting here. And he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. That's what I want to focus on right there. I'm going to show you here in just a minute. But it says, just to finish the verse, Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that wood. That I laid not down, and reaping not. That I did not sow. You know, different story here. But the whole point is, this right here is a truth from Scripture. Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. All right, and that's going to be the case with Ed Finninger. Uh, he doesn't have a personal relationship. He pretty much admitted that. He just goes with what he's read, and, and, and you know, God's not showing him anything. Chapter twelve. You know, wouldn't answer what I'm saying. You know, just makes videos against everybody, but uh, you know, he's the only one that's right, and. Um, Anyways, let's continue. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And that's where I'm going to leave with Ed Finninger. All right. I knew that this guy would basically prove that he's lost. If I confront him hard, 
I don't waste time with him because he just, you know, normally I don't waste time with him because it's just this continuous, you know, he'll just twist everything you say and just go over every little word. That's all he does. That's all this guy has. He cannot produce anything original. And when I say that, I'm saying he can't say, okay, um, the Lord put it in my heart to do a sermon on whatever. Because the Lord isn't going to put anything in his heart. He has no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He has a conversion experience that he had back as a young child before he could have possibly known anything about all the implications of I'm a sinner and my personal sins have separated me you know, from God and, and I deserve to go to hell and everything. Else. He doesn't understand that stuff. Young child in the Catholic Church. That's his testimony. So, no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And he, he, he kind of mocks that whole thing. You know, God has revealed a lot of things to me. God has revealed a lot of things to many Christians that I know. Some very, very young in the faith. I mean, I've been absolutely fascinated by people um, just living wicked, horrible lives. And all of a sudden, you know, they, they're just broken. And they come to that point of salvation. And they say, Lord... I'm a sinner. I can't keep going on like this. I just, I need to get saved. Please, God, save me. They call upon the name of the Lord. You know, it's just a natural thing. God is the author of salvation. And you come to him and you, and you cry out to him. And you say, God, please save me. I know I don't deserve it. I, but please, I need to be saved. Broken, contrite spirit. You see, repentance. They turn from their self-righteousness. They're turning to the Lord and saying, you're my only chance. I don't deserve heaven. I don't deserve to be saved. Please, God, save me. I don't want this life anymore that I've been living. I need something different. I need help. They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Ed Fenninger's never experienced that. So, you know, um, he's going to go the way of Martin Richling. I do believe that, and any other false prophet that's come out with head knowledge and tried to attack Bible-believing ministries, and just, I mean, it's all he does. It's all he's capable of. So, I will publicly say, Ed Fenninger, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. You have lied. You have preached a false gospel. You are a deceiver. May the wrath of God be upon you. You know the truth. It's not that you're just ignorant. You know the truth and you turn people against the truth. So may God's wrath be heavily upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.